What's going on guys, the CTA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the all new NVIDIA Jetson Nano Developer Kit. Now this is sold as a developer kit, but basically what we have here is an ARM based single board computer. NVIDIA's main selling point for the Nano is AI for the masses. The board retails for $99 and you're also going to have to provide your own SD card and power supply. Inside of the box, we obviously get the Jetson Nano, a quick start guide, and a little cardboard stand slash makeshift case. Personally, I'm not going to be using this stand on a day-to-day -day basis, but I thought it was pretty interesting that they included something like this. It just kind of keeps it up and out of the way. So in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the Nano like it's a regular single board computer. Day-to-day -day use case scenarios from photo editing, video playback, emulation, and things like that. Like I mentioned, NVIDIA is marketing this as a tiny AI device and it does a pretty good job, but if you're really interested in AI, I recommend checking out a YouTube channel and a website called Jets and Hacks. I'm going to leave links in the description for both. He's been creating tutorials since the day this was released and he's got some really good content over there, so definitely check him out. So just taking a quick look at the board, on the far left we have our power input. Now this is actually optional, but I do recommend it. This will allow us to get as much wattage as we can to this device. You could also use the micro USB on the far right hand side, but you're going to be limited on power. If you want to run this at 5 watts, I would use the micro USB. If you want to run it in 10, I would use the barrel jack for power. When using the micro USB for power, it'd be similar to the one you use with a Raspberry Pi. 5 volt, 2.5 amp, and if you want to go with the barrel jack, go with a 5 volt, 4 amp or higher. We also have a full-size display port, full-size HDMI 2.0, four USB 3.0 ports, and gigabit ethernet. There's not much going on around back here, but there is a micro SD card slot. Moving over to the right-hand side, depending on how you're looking at the board, we do have 40 GPIO pins laid out just like the Raspberry Pi and most other single board computers. It is compatible with most Raspberry Pi hats as long as you can fit it in here and get the software working. And on the left hand side we do have an 8 pin button header for system power reset and force recovery if you want to set that up, it's totally not mandatory. Plus we have one MIPI CSI 2 lane camera connector, just like you see on the Raspberry Pis. Flipping her over, there's not much to see here, but the GPIO pins are labeled on the bottom PCB. So out of the box, the Nano is set up to use the micro USB for power. You will have to jump this connector here if you want to use the barrel jack, and I just used a simple little GPIO jumper. I'm going to find something a little smaller off an old motherboard soon, but this will work. Just jump these two pins together and you can use the barrel jack for power. The CPU, RAM, and pretty much the brains of this whole board are all stored in this module. This is a 260 pin SODIMM slot on the connector for the bottom. And maybe in the future, they're going to offer more powerful modules that we can place in here. But removing this reveals an M.2 E key. It's PCIe X1, USB 2.0, UR, I2S, and I2C. You can use a wireless network card in here, and who knows, maybe other things will also work in this slot. Real quick, the Nano module contains the micro SD card slot in the bottom. It is totally accessible from the back of the board. As for the specs on the NVIDIA Jetson Nano, for the CPU, we have a quad-core A57 processor at 1.43 GHz. This is a downclock Tegra X1. We also keep the Maxwell GPU, but they've removed half of the cores that came in the original Tegra X1 that's in the NVIDIA Shield and the Nintendo Switch, so we're down to 128 core. As for RAM, we get 4GB 64-bit LPDDR4 storage, micro SD card slot. There's no Wi-Fi built in, but we can add one to that M.2 key underneath the module. But it does include gigabit Ethernet, four USB 3.0 ports, one micro USB 2.0, MIPI CSI two-lane camera connector, M.2 key E, 40 GPIO pins, 8-pin power header, and for the operating system, as of right now, they do offer an image that works really well with this. I'm about to show it off, but it's Ubuntu 18.04, specifically designed for the Jetson Nano. For video encoding, it can do one stream 4K 30fps, 4 1080p at 30, 9 at 720p, 30fps, H.264, H.265. This will all be simultaneously encoded. And as for decoding, it'll do one 4K at 60, two 4K at 30, 8 1080p's at 30, or 18 720p videos at 30 FPS, H.264, H.265. Encoding 4 1080p videos at 30 is pretty impressive for a single board computer, never mind decoding 18 720p videos at the same time. So with all that out of the way, let's get into a little bit of testing. I got a few things I want to check out here, and I am working on a few more videos, so definitely stay tuned to the channel if you're interested in the NVIDIA Jetson Nano. 
All right, so here we are with Ubuntu 18.04. We got that four gigs of RAM. Now this image here is available on NVIDIA's website. You can just flash it to an SD card and be up and running in no time. So the Nano comes pre-configured at 10 watts, but you can set it to five watts if you'd like to. And we also have this little option over here in the top right-hand corner. We can set the clock speed on the CPU or the governor. I usually just leave it at 1.43 turbo, but you can set it to on demand, power save, or performance. It's really up to you. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning, this was designed with AI in mind, and they do have a few demos available, like the DeepStream demo. As you can see, we have eight camera feeds going right now. Now, this is actually a pre recorded video, but it is tracking everything in real time. We have cars and people being tracked. I also heard rumor that you can do this with cats and dogs, but personally, I haven't tested it out. Another awesome thing that's possible with the Nano is an autonomous robot. Now this is the JetBot here. It has a Raspberry Pi camera in the front. This thing will just roll around on its own. It'll avoid obstacles. It can do face detection as long as it's programmed correctly. I may actually have enough parts laying around to build something similar to this, so if you're interested in checking that out, let me know in the comments below. But if you're really into the AI side of the Jetson Nano, I recommend going over on YouTube to Jetson Hacks. I'll leave a link in the description and at the end of the video. And he's really focused on the AI and development side of the Jetson Nano. Personally, me and a lot of my viewers are going to be interested in this as an everyday computer or a little emulation box. So really, that's what I'm going to be focusing on my channel. I might do a couple AI demos down the road, but it's really time consuming and I've been wanting to get this video out for a few days now. So I've been really happy with the performance of the Nano as like an everyday computer, just a web browser, video playback device, or even emulation. Here we have YouTube running. This is only at 1080p. I'm running this on a 1080p screen and I have no way to record 4K. But with 1080p, the Jetson Nano has been amazing, at least with this first release. As for 4K video playback online from YouTube, it is a bit choppy, but that could be fixed down the road. This hardware has more than enough power to do it. So for everyday web browsing, 1080p video watching, this little device has been really awesome. Like I mentioned in the very first video I did on Dolphin emulation with the Nano, this has been the smoothest desktop experience I've ever had on an ARM-based single board computer. Now I'm sure that's going to change down the road as these ARM based single board computers get more powerful, but for now, this has been an awesome little board. As for native video playback, 720, 1080, and 4K 30fps have worked really well here. I see a little bit of stutter in this video, I test it on a lot of single board computers. This is the 30fps 4K version of Big Buck Bunny. But you gotta keep in mind that it's still really early for the Jetson Nano. Performance will improve over time. I also tried out the 60 FPS 4K version of the same video and it's really not even worth showing it off. It's very, very choppy. Photo and image editing on this device is actually pretty snappy using GIMP. You can install this from the store or the local repository. It's really easy to get up and running. The image I have here is just a single layer, 7,680 by 4,320 pixels, RGB, single layer. But let's say we want to go right in here and just select a certain color from this picture. I can select a single color. It's going to pick it out from everywhere in this photo here. When I left click one more time, it's going to find it throughout the photo. And we have that same green and we can go ahead and delete it. Using GIMP on my everyday x86 Linux machine is 10 to 20 times faster than this. You don't even see it delete anything, but for an ARM board, this is pretty decent. Selected one of the blues out of here, and we'll go ahead and cut. You see it takes a second to render it out. Now I understand that this isn't a professional photography test, but I'm not a professional photographer. If you were interested in doing some light image editing with the Jetson Nano, it'll definitely get the job done. As for retro gaming on the Jetson Nano, it actually works really well. RetroArch will install. It works fine here. This is 1.76. I'm running SNES with SNES 9X. Unfortunately, I was unable to get PSP or PPSSPP to work on here no matter what I try. Final Burn Alpha and main games work pretty well also. 
and I recently made a video on the Dolphin emulator, GameCube, running on the Jetson Nano. Now, if you're looking for this specifically for retro gaming, I would spend a little more and get the Nvidia Shield Android TV. It does have the better Tegra X1 in it with 256 GPU cores instead of 128, like the Jetson Nano, so it is more powerful. But for now, you will be stuck with Android on the Shield TV, unless we can get this working on the Shield TV, which would be absolutely amazing. I've tried to install RetroPie on here, but I'm running into a lot of dependency issues. Hopefully, I can get that worked out in the next few days. If you want to run Kodi on a board like this, it's totally possible. Just go to the store, or you can download it from the repository. So far, the board's been really solid. We just need to get a couple of these in the hands of developers so we can get some more stuff working on here. But overall, I've been really enjoying the experience. And one of the most important things about a single board computer is having fun. And I can tell you right now, I've been having more fun with this than I have with an ARM-based single board computer in a long time. So it's really up to you if you want to get a hold of one of these. I do have a few more videos coming up. If there's anything else you want to see running on the Jetson Nano, just let me know in the comments below. I'm going to leave links to NVIDIA's website. There's tons of documentation over there. You can pick one up for $99 and download this image. I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel, and like always... Thanks for watching.